All right, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Go With The Flow. I'm your host, Falarin Okulaja, here with another special guest. And honestly, the re- I always say every guest is special, and I truly mean it. But this one is special because, which and we're about to get into this in two seconds, but you have a show, Alicats. Shout out to Alicats. Welcome to the show. Clap, clap, Hi, clap. Everyone. I'm excited because your show, which we're going to talk about in literally 30 seconds, is the first time I've ever done someone else's like show of some sort. And so that was just kind of an exciting thing for me. I've done this podcast for three years. I've had a bunch of people on here. That was my first time doing the opposite. And so I'm excited to now have the roles reversed and have you on my show. But welcome to the show, Ella. Thank you. I'm already <laughs> having the best time. Um, oh my God, this is so fun. And it's so fun now that I'm in the hot seat yeah, because the, hot, roles reverse, the yeah. role reversal <laughs> is wild and it messes with your head but every time i do it or i've done it it's just fun and great and i'm so excited to talk to you today. yeah and so you have you ever done a podcast before because i know when... i have okay um i dabbled in it in college which was not i mean our the setup was pretty legit it wasn't this but mm -hmm. and then i was also on like a friends of a friends podcast okay love it but when which we'll get into all this but you're yeah. used to being on the mic in front of the camera yeah. and so you're going to be a natural it's going to be a great episode but first before we get into things just tell the people who are you where are you from give them your background oh my god hi um i'm ella i am who am i i'm a storyteller i'm a person i'm a human being not a human doing not to sound Ooh. so cheese ball. I've never heard that one. Okay. I might I don't well, human I, being. Human being, not a human. Yeah. Okay. I like From it. From Chi Town, Chicago. Okay. Actual Chicago City downtown. Not the suburbs like most people will say they're from. Correct. Okay, got it. Great okay. people, very cold. <laughs> kind, kind people. Um, grew up there and then went to the University of Southern California where I studied journalism and minored in the business of film um, and start and then came to New York where I now work and live and breathe and cry and laugh. And, and honestly, yeah, we do all we do all those yeah. things. And the yeah. way we got connected was through shout out Julia Mendelssohn, like, who has also been on the show, which was Sh the best episode. Great episode. That is my favorite. I love doing callbacks to old episodes every Feb, every February, I will do a Valentine's Day episode where I'll get a couple on and we'll just talk about their relationship, the way it's grown, all that fun stuff. Love. And so Julie was on that episode. And so she took, actually, no, she didn't even tell me that she gave you my number. And I just got a text from you and I was like, she what? just said it was kind of like a fate thing. She was, we were workshopping toddler toddlers in my kitchen and it was just all a mess. And she was like, you have to meet Flo. He is awesome and creative and you got it you just she was just like you gotta meet him so i don't even think she asked you she yeah, just she, like didn't even, sent yeah it. she just sent it and then you texted me and i was like oh my god for you told me about the show totally. you're trying to do totally. ask me if i'd come on i was like oh amazing and then I, I think julie then maybe like a couple days later was like oh by the way like i gave your number to ellen i was like yeah no we could no, <laughs> but shout out to bad. julia she made this episode happen but okay we've already hinted at it, at it a few times taller toddlers tell the people what what is what is taller toddlers oh my god so I believe that there is a fundamental truth that every adult is a taller toddler. Okay, break that down for us. Is a grown up kid. Mm -hmm. And um, as you know, as I know, as we all know, not only Gen Z and millennials, but honestly, the world right now is in this terrifying, insufferable loneliness epidemic um, and mental health crisis. And I believe that normalizing what keeps us all up under the covers at night with a childlike sense of joy and novelty. We have, you know, we have Play-Doh, we, yep. we have Good Night Moon, <laughs> we have, you know, Scooby Snacks, all those things that are going to get you into that nostalgic childhood state. Um, but, but while also having, you know, silly but also substantive conversations, can make people feel less alone in the really hard parts of adulting. Both the menial stuff, the, oh my God, my laundry, did I separate the whites from the grays? And what do I make for dinner? But also the, oh my God, my parents are people. Oh my God, I hate the job that I thought I wanted. Oh yeah. my God, I'm questioning <laughs> my sexuality. Like all of these things that all of us feel at different times in our journey, we gotta talk about it. And it's gotta get deeper than just, oh, mental health matters. Yeah, yeah, no, no, we really need to dig deeper, but it can't be the way I'm trying to go about it is in, again, a silly, playful, childlike way. Because, it's also genuine, yeah. Thank you, because that's what people want. Yeah. And I don't think that 
people don't want the the light heart, you know, the surface level stuff, but they sometimes when it's too deep or too serious because it is so intense, they're not going to resonate with that on social either. So yeah. this is kind of my unique way that I'm trying to go about it. I love it. I love everything about that. And I did the show. Honestly, it was months ago at this point. I know. It it's great... evolved a lot. We, was... You're going to come back. I please. Oh, yes, For please. Sure. You For all, sure. And you are will be welcome on the show back all the time. But the thing, everything that you just said, I think it is really important because kind of like you said, the different struggles that everyone goes through because we exist as human beings, not human not human doings. Look at that. All right. Mm-hmm. Already, already, oh, already oh, stealing that I line. Yes. We just don't appreciate that. All, all the things that I'm going through, everyone that I walk by on every single day is going through the exact same things. And we forget that humanity about each other. And it's not very easy for us to kind of have the conversations about the things that are keeping us up, keeping us mm-hmm. up at night. And so it is, that is honestly one of the reasons that I have this platform mm-hmm. is I just love connecting with people. And just, again, we'll have serious conversations, but we'll also have lighthearted conversations, really? which I, well, I remember when we spoke for the first time on the phone, there were so many similarities between the two things that we we're trying to do. I was like, she's great. We need to, we need to make this happen. But you just said the show's evolved since I've been on. How has it evolved? Um, I think I, I am trying to stay true to, I'm trying to be authentic Mm -hmm. in whatever I do because I think that social media is the best, worst thing. That's what I said to my friend the other day. And I think it's true. You kind of have to cater it to how it's going to make you feel good. And that's like intentional, like following the people that make you feel good or bring you inspiration or wisdom or resources or whatever it is. For me, I want people to come to toddlers and feel a sense of comfort. and so I think I've been trying to lean into that. And it's funny because some of the lower stakes videos and segments, like I've, I'm not really doing it in my apartment anymore. I'm doing it on or near a playground. Okay. And even just the little moments people are resonating with more than a traditional setup. So I'm just playing. I'm just open-minded and kind of throwing shit at the wall. Have you, what, how has your relationship with social media evolved over time? Have you always had this kind of mindset about it that it is, it has its pros and cons or were there ever times where you kind of held it up to be, to be more than it actually was? I'm just curious what that yeah. growth has it's been like for you. It's a great question. My, uh, God, it's so hard. It, it's because I, I, it is a highlight reel. Of exactly. course. A cur- curated highlight reel is what I, I call Instagram. I also exactly. try to post, you know, my epic fails and spills and sweats of life. And I hope I do that. Um, But again, like when I'm doom scrolling, when I'm having a great day, I'm like on your show, I'm seeing friends, I'm working out, whatever. It's a beautiful summer yes. day. And, and, and I'm Saturday. not yeah. sitting today and sc- and doom scrolling. Yeah. But on the days that I'm feeling down or struggling with something or just in the thick of a dark time, that's when I'm scrolling. Yeah. So that's the part that I hate and still really struggle with is like, you're not going to go to social to compare your life and your body and your job and your relationship to everybody else when you feel good. You're only going to do it when you feel bad. Yeah. So what I've had to do now and the way it's evolved to answer your question is, I like police myself, like screen time limits. Sure. But even just kind of having to set that discipline, um, in a way of like, this is actually not going to make me feel good right now or in the next hour. So we got to just put, put the phone down, throw it away, airplane mode, whatever you have to do. Yeah. And I feel like for me, there have been so many different ebbs and flows of the way that I look at it and the way that I use it. The main apps that I, I don't really use TikTok, mm. which I'm thankful for because people say how addicting the algorithm is Incredibly. and it keeps you scrolling. So I'm thankful that I've never actually scrolled. I only created a TikTok to post clips for my podcast and I'll literally open the app, post my clip and close. close and I'm thankful that for whatever reason, I've been able to be hooked into it. Obviously, people will send me TikToks and I'll look at the TikToks, but I'm not actually scrolling on there. So my two apps of choice are Twitter, which I'm never going to call mm. X. It's Twitter. Twitter and Instagram. Twitter is an interesting one. And I love exactly what you said about you need to follow the right people. You need to kind of curate your own timeline Absolutely. in the way that will make it the most fruitful for you. Because there is definitely once upon a time where when you're following the wrong people, when there's certain negativity that people are always tweeting about. Honestly, just certain accounts and people, I just had to unfollow because it's like 100%. I swear anytime – I'm looking at your feed. It's making me sad because all you're doing is tweeting about this and that and the other. I'm like, okay, I realize there's all these different things going on in the world. Fair. 
But when I'm coming to Twitter, I just want a good laugh. Mm. And I've been able to curate my feed now in a way where it's literally just a lot of sports and memes, some entertainment, and that is perfect for me. Great. I mute certain words. I mute certain people. I block certain people just to make sure that the feed is ex exactly what I need it to be. And so that's been one where now I do probably spend a lot of time on Twitter, but it's just like laughing at dumb shit and not actually like affecting me or my mental health in any sort of right. negative way. And Twitter is an interesting one, you know. I think I, I don't use it that much personally. Instagram is definitely, I'm an Instagram. Yeah, I'm going to get to Instagram I, next, yeah. <laughs> I love it. I just, I, it's kind of like the LinkedIn, you know, you use it to connect with people. And I just, it just like makes Ooh, sense. LinkedIn's another one we'll get to. Yeah, this. LinkedIn. <laughs> so excited to announce my new job, our Henny. Like, oh my, I mean, I've done it too, but like, I hate it. Like, I've never posted on, I've only posted on LinkedIn to promote my podcast. I, yeah, there's something about that, which again, this, I'll say I don't even care how it sounds. There is so much that, yes, we're all accomplishing great things. I just feel like when it's posted on there, it's just so like something feels so fake about it uh, and like inauthentic. And I'm just like the way people announce stuff, and it's just like it's just I cringe. Eager to share, like do you know what I do when I when I read that? I'm really like, <laughs> oh my yeah, god! I like, cringe when I'm just... reading 95 percent of. LinkedIn post. So yeah, I don't. If I ever post on LinkedIn, you gotta know like there's like there was like a gun to my head. Someone's like, you need to do this for X Y Z. I'll hold but you it's, accountable on that. It's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, I will. I totally will. Um, but then so Instagram for me has been the tougher one, and I've had because that's the app where you will compare yourself to people. A lot of the time, it's the easiest to do that. I don't even. I'm to the point where. I go through different phases of just like on, and I'm curious how you feel about this. Like, just I'll go through my following list every once in a while, and I'll just like weed people out, not because like there's any animosity or I don't like this person, this, that, the other. I just feel like that app in particular needs to be for one where you are just seeing the lives of people that you care about, mm. and when it's people who like some of my closest friends who I haven't been able to been able to see since graduation. I like knowing what trips are going on. I like seeing their day-to-day -day right. life. When it's this one person that I met three years ago at this one random event that I'm probably never, ever going to see again, do I really need to see the extra little data point of, oh, this person is doing this amazing trip, this person is doing this, that, and the other? No. I, I don't. But. But, okay, let me hear it. But the but there is, is that sometimes that's like the LinkedIn level for me. Okay. Like somebody I met once, I would rather have their Instagram than their number because if they post a cool project they're working on or they're looking for an extra or like as I come into my creative which we'll talk about later like I, I that helps me kind mm -hmm. of and also if I get someone's number unless I'm like dating that like I'm like I don't remember who this even yeah, is fair. sometimes but the Instagram comparison thing is tough and with the follower it's like a closet clean out I need to do it more what's hard is that I think ever since college and this might be a more gendered thing or for women like unfollowing people that are maybe in your secondary ter tertiary ther that that's a big tertiary one. that's tertiary. a tertiary that is okay. a word confirmed yep <laughs> secondary tertiary you know circle of friends mm -hmm. if you just go and unfollow them i think it can be seen as like petty or like oh my which God, like um, ella unfollowed me like, and that needs to be spoken about more because i really don't think it's that deep i remember I right. it's really not that deep at all because people will unfollow me and i remember i would like feel a type of way but i'm like at the end of the day, one, I should have probably, we should have not even been following each, following right, each other to right. start with. And at the same, You're we, right. there are people who would unfollow me, but when we meet up and we see each other in real life, there's no type of like, anim like we're still going to talk. It's going right. to be a normal interaction, like, I don't which is the way we should like be as human beings. Exactly. Yeah. I see you in person. We'll have a conversation. We'll chop it up. But I don't really need to be having you on my feed and vice versa. So totally. I do think there is for, there is a stigma around unfollowing people. People mm -hmm. think it's petty, whatever. I don't think it's that deep. There is maybe like 20 people where if they've unfollowed me, I'll be like, okay, what the fuck? Like, we got to talk about this. That's what I'm and saying. And that list is so, so small. So, so yeah. small. It's like my siblings, some of my best friends. Like, if they unfollow me, there's some real shit going on. The rest of the people, if you unfollow me, that's that's okay. If I see you in real life, we're still going to talk. It's going to be a normal I think a lot of people are probably just too insecure to or don't feel good enough with themselves, unfortunately, yeah. to be like, you're in or you're out. I don't care. But... But not go with the flow. Not go, which is honestly, and that's go. why I like the I like the the two way. And LinkedIn is good for making that connection and keeping mm -hmm. up with people. I like it for that purpose. If I meet someone for the first time, I don't love exchanging Instagrams. To be honest, 
I do like the numbers. Facebook was also good in that sense because it was like a two-way thing where it's totally. like you both need to accept it. Totally. There's no like follow and you need to follow back. <laughs> yeah. Ryan is... The dating app, like where I, you have to like, oh, no, I know Ryan, but you... like you. Oh, wait. I, it was like a Facebook, like it's like a mutual. Okay, ignore. okay. All okay. I have to say to put a, put a bow on this conversation is if someone ever in, in the wild asks me for my Snapchat, it is over and I will never do, speak. Do people again. still do that? It has happened in the last year. In the okay, that's I didn't know people were st actually Snapchat. Their user base is still very strong. I just assume it's like teenagers. It is it's, middle yeah, middle it high school. It's, it if is. you are twenty, how old are you? Twenty four. Twenty three. You're twenty three. Yeah. I'm twenty four. If you're twenty three plus, still on Snapchat, you gotta figure that. One. You gotta you go. Get, you gotta totally. figure. You gotta let that one go. You gotta. Who? No. Yeah. Oh my you god. Can't. People. Do you people can't. still have? I hope. I don't. Not. I hope not. Also. I hope not. Even I my. Really hope not. Yeah. That's yeah. Uh, an that interesting one. Yeah. Um, so yeah, social media, my relationship with it has kind of evolved over time. Now I'm at a point where on Instagram, I'm really not scrolling a ton. I do post. I like to post. I think it's a good way to kind of not journal. Well, it's like a, it is like it's a visual. A portfolio. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like a portfolio, like That's a visual journal. For work. I think it's better than a resume. I'm like, you want to see what I'm working on? Just go to my Instagram. Do you judge people based off their Instagram? More than I'd like to admit. Um, I think, I think the goal we should all be going for with as relates to our social media presence is, it is never going to be a one to one. So, Flo's Instagram is never going to be Flo, but you want to get it to ninety eight, ninety nine percent. What you see is what you get. I don't even even that. I don't know if you need to get it that far. I'm not whatever people because you just know it's fake. I don't look at anyone's Instagram and think that's their real life. And so because I come into it with that mindset, I'm like, if your Instagram is sort of like a feed, it's like a, some people will post a lot and it's whether it's they're traveling, whether it's they're going out, I see it again. It's like your curated highlight reel. And these mm -hmm. are kind of like, these are the highlights of your life. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what I look at it mm -hmm. as. There is so much more depth to everyone, I think, than their Instagram. And it's funny because I just, I went on a first date. When was How'd it? it go? It went well. Okay, how do you how do you meet? Because how do, oh well, you didn't okay, meet well, okay, okay, sorry. No, no, honestly, no, we can no, we can talk about that now. So when I went on your show back in what it was like March. Yeah, it was like the deep dark winter. Yeah, it was still. I was it cold. Was dark there now. was a jet. I was wearing jackets. It was yeah. cold out. But for whatever reason, dating apps came up on the show, and I'd spoken about how I've been on them for a while, and I didn't really like them, and they were just not doing anything for me. And so I after. In the past, I would always delete the app off my phone. But then when you came on, you, like, inspired me to actually delete my account. And so I deleted the account. And I have Clip is getting posted, by the way, like, today. I love it, yeah. So, <laughs> you know. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Okay. And we, I haven't looked back since. But how did I meet her? I actually DM'd her on Instagram. See, there That's how I met this one. better than him. And there's other, yes. And it's been, you've mentioned this on the show, but you, it is actually easier to, it's very easy to meet people in person. Either, it's, not, it's a mental block. It's all a mental. Yeah, when you have the apps, it's such a crutch that if you see someone you would like to approach, you know you're not going to because you can go and you can scroll for hours 100%. on your phone. What, since I have no app, I do I do like going on dates. I, yeah. I am dating. I'm a single I'm, yeah. Yeah, single guy, so I'm going on dates. So now if I see a girl that I would, I'm would, i somewhat interested in, I will approach. I will say hello. I will try to get Instagram number, blah, blah, blah. And I have gone on. That's how I've gone on dates the last three, four months, just meeting people in person. Go. So it's doable. I love it. It's more than doable. It's fun. It's doable. It makes you feel like, oh my God, this is what our parents had to do. Yes. Like <laughs> in the wild, like crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just fun. And I think if you're feeling like, oh my God, dating apps suck, like just try to get off them for a yeah. second. So. Yeah. Um, what has been your favorite part about doing taller toddlers thus far? Oh God, it's like that feeling I get where you're just so alive. Like, I just, I'm like, this is what life is about. It's about connecting with, because because the vision I have for the show is like Humans of New York meets the Drew Barrymore show. Love it. So we're going to manifest and put that out there. <laughs> Please, I, um, I'm big on manifesting. And put it on yeah, I can talk about that for hours too. But um, I think the best part is it's very grounding for me because we are all, I just burped. We are all <laughs> so, so much more similar than we are different, which you spoke about at the beginning of this. And like just the talking about it in a low stakes way. And the nostalgia, like for me too, I'm not, that's not acting. Like I'm in an acting class, that's separate. Like play, the Play-Doh and all that just feels, I feel like a kid again. And it's awesome.
exactly that line of we are all so much similar. So, yeah, we're so much more similar mm-hmm. than we are different. That was also one of my cheesy reasons when I started this podcast. Mm. The world is when we can, like, we're not going to get into it, but it's such a divided place. All for you bring up any issue, people are going to fight about it. But at the end of the day, how much of it really should be that deep? Personally, I don't think there is a lot. I think any two people, if they sat down, they could find common ground and find things that they will connect on. And that was literally the ethos behind Go With The Flow. I'm like, I don't care who you are, what you think about X, Y, and Z. You can come on the show. We can have a conversation. We're going to find things we relate about. And we're going to get along. And we will leave, although we might not agree on every single thing. I'm not going to hate you. You're not going to hate me right. because we've come and we've broken bread. So Which that's is such a beautiful thing. And what I will say is the issue I find with our generation, I'm not even excluding myself in this sentence. We don't know how to listen. Agreed. And because we are such selfish consumers and social media scrollers, like we get fed this information that is, you know, by an algorithm that's curated to what we already believe in. So it's a self-fulfilling, oh my God, of course, everybody thinks this way, everybody feels this way, about deeper issues, geopolitical issues, but also small things. Um, and then we can't listen and we cannot agree to disagree. Yeah. And so we've kind of lost all the means of respectable discourse. And it's scary. Agreed. It's really scary. Agreed. And as someone who, and we'll get into you being in journalism, you're a journalism major, you are a journalist. Yeah. We'll get into later, a, li- a little bit later on about how you navigate that and what you mm-hmm. feel like your responsibility is in all this discourse. But when you, so for the show, I've seen some, I've, honestly, I watch all the clips. Oh, I love you. I see the ones that you do on the plane. When you do you literally just like lean over to someone and say, like, I have the show, will you come up? Like, how do you how do you make yeah. that connection happen? It's, <laughs> that a, great, is... <laughs> it's a great question because it's scary. So I've I've always been I've I love plain people. I love plain talkers. I feel so inspired by the fact of like we are all in this metal tube and like, sorry to the plain anxiety peeps, like, we don't know what's gonna happen in the next couple hours, okay? And so we're kind of like all in it together. And I'm never going to see you again. I'm yeah. never going to see you again. So maybe you have something to share about your life that's going to inspire me or change my perspective. Like some of the most beautiful moments of human interaction I have ever had on a plane are on a plane. Oh, wow. I don't know why. It's just like a, in transit, I get so inspired. Do you have any the examples? Sub, the subway too. Like one time I was on a plane from Miami to LA and I met a woman who – was like going to the funeral for her best friend who overdosed. And I also think there's, sometimes it can be classy, sometimes it can be an overshare, but people, people feel, it's a thing. There's a, there's a word for it or even science to back it of like when you feel the power of like telling kind of your life story to someone you know you're never going to see again because they don't really know anything about you. Yeah. Um, but back to how I ask. So from the minute I sit down, I can I can read the vibe. Okay. Like I can <laughs> I can know if I'm gonna ask them or not. Uh-huh. I bring my mics with me always. And I will just start talk I will never just approach someone in the Washington Square Park right? like, can I ask you a question? Like, no. We sit, we talk, how's your day? Where are you going? Are you from here? Stuff like that as we're, like, getting situated in the seat. This is a lost art. Some people don't even know how to talk to strangers. Well, this that, this so it's is like lost art. Yeah. For that too. It's <laughs> also, like, the journalism, like, man on street, I guess, my training. But, um, yeah, and then if the conversation's flowing or I can just tell. I mean, sometimes you get a guy like Ted who's like, I have an extra Rice Krispie treat. I'm like, this is a sign. This is my favorite sm- snack as a toddler toddler. I saw that like, clip, yeah. Immediately, <laughs> yes. Um, but then sometimes the conversation flows and then I ask – and I say, you know, I have the social media series where I talk to adults about, you know, whatever. And uh, would you be like, would you be okay if I just like filmed a quick video and we could just have a natural conversation? And usually they say yes. There have been, there hasn't been a no in the seat, which would probably be really awkward because then we would just continue. Then you're stuck on the plane. For but I, totally. Many but hours. I have approached people. <laughs> but then I like to like. Well, there was one time actually. There was one time where I, we did it. I like. I also like to enjoy my flight and like not talk to people because I'm a normal person. <laughs> but I have gotten myself in a situation where, you know, we did it and then, you know, my my fellow toddler toddler would not stop talking to me for the entire flight. Ah, but then at that point you put yourself in It was my fault. You, you put so yourself I'm like in testing position. my family and I'm like, you guys, like, I need to do work. He won't let me do my work. You're like, what do I do? And they're like, Ella, you you brought this. You bought yourself. how long was that flight? It was like 
two and a half. That's solid. Which That's was a, not short. Not, yeah, um, but not super long. But, but it was worth it. It was yeah. worth it because I'm like, you know what? Maybe this guy doesn't have anybody else to talk to in his life. Yeah. It's okay. Um, but people have said no too, 100%. Yeah, which is, which is fair. I don't, I'm trying to think. I hardly ever speak to people on planes, actually. The more that I think about it, I've never. I love it. I don't know. It's maybe I need like to try place. it out I now. I think you should try it. I'm, I'm where am I going? I'm going to London on Tuesday. Okay, I will. I'll say this. I'm gonna challenge myself. I think you should. I'll do it. Fuck I'm it. We'll see. On that, okay? okay, please do. I yeah, leave Tuesday on. night, land Wednesday morning. Okay, I will try to make. Do you ever? Is it always the person seated next to you, or do you do it when you're also at the gate? Or, um, you. I should do it at the gate, but it's usually the person next to me because it's like you're not going anywhere. Like it, it can <laughs> progress into a natural. But the thing people don't realize is like, I actually have had a lot of these before that I haven't filmed. Mm -hmm. So like. And that, to me, is, like, the authentic part of it, where I'm like, this is just what I would do anyways. I'm just, like, holding up my iPhone, yeah. which I like. Yeah, okay, fair. I will challenge myself to yeah, let's make go. my flight on totally. Tuesday. I will speak totally. to someone. I love but it. This, and since we're on the topic, I saw this great article, and it is about, essentially, what people see as acceptable versus unacceptable to do on airplanes. Do you have any, are there any general topics that you think are mentioned here and if you think people think acceptable versus unacceptable okay if it's an overnight before before we go through some some <laughs> items on the list if it's an overnight flight <clears throat> you can take your shoes off you must be wearing socks and when you go to the bathroom you have to put your shoes on there is no option people go to their to the bathroom yes. without just look in the aisle or don't it's scary i've <sighs> seen it on an hour and a half flight to like cleveland or and never been to cleveland but to chicago like what are you doing on the shoes off point you think you can't take them off? Definitely, if you have no socks on, keep your fucking shoes Over. on. We Over. Don't, we don't want to see that. Get off the plane, bro. Like, yeah, that's yeah, that, crazy. I guess if you, have so if you have socks on, fine. But even that, we're comfortable. And, like, these are my... Every, I talk about these shoes every episode because they're so fucking comfortable. Literally and crazy. And I only ever travel with these, these are because... are not my everyday shoe, <laughs> but, like, those are crazy. Okay, you travel with them. And I travel with them because I know even if I'm traveling for 24 hours, these can stay on my feet all day. I'm comfortable. I don't have to think about them. I think everyone should be mindful of just wearing footwear that's comfortable enough that you don't have to take them off. But I guess, fine. If you have socks on, I'm more inclined to say that is okay. Socks off, definitely Over. Not. The one other thing I feel incredibly strongly about <clears throat> is window etiquette okay okay i'm a window girl through and through regardless of the length of the flight i'm a window guy if it's like four hours and honestly like five hour flight and below window guy because when i see i don't need to get up i can sit the entire time once it gets longer i know i need to use the bathroom then i become an aisle guy it's for Let's me see. i just i like to um look out the window and pretend that i am in a movie okay you know, it's okay. really so dramatic. Yeah, um, <laughs> I do that. I do that in cars and car rides sometimes. Yes, you, me too. We all have that main character syndrome. No, no, me, no. Yeah. <laughs> I have it so badly. Like it's not even funny, but it works. So, I always do the window when I can. If I for some reason can't get the window, and you are sitting on the window, and you close the window for takeoff and landing, like. <laughs> Are you trying to give me vertigo? What is wrong with you? Do you have some type of trauma we need to unpack? Like, this is crazy to me that people don't want the window open during takeoff and landing. I've, I like it, like, blows my mind. I've never thought about that. And as someone, wow, I've definitely been guilty of this. Because I get the claustrophobia. I'm just like, and open it. I'm like, open it now. I tend to, huh, okay, now I'm trying to think about, now I'm trying to think of my own plane behavior and I do sit when, or, yeah, window seat a lot. I would say I'm like 50-50. Sometimes I'm like, okay, like let's take it all in and this look outside. So funny. Other times I'm just like, okay, I might be reading a book. I might be just doing I might just lock right into the TV and be doing something else that I don't mm -hmm. don't put it up. And now I'm wondering if there's been people who are next to me that have been annoyed at me. 100%. Because people never really say anything. I've never, ever, ever right. had someone who says, I have actually, Can you open the window, please? I have actually said something. You've done that to people. I have like me it was bumpy. Like I need to see what's happening. You in the need back. to huh. I need to see it now. Okay. Like, Do you have a guess for what you think was the least or the the most unacceptable thing for people to do um, on planes? Rec not reclining. Oh, we'll get to reclining, but it's not reclining. Um, the most unacceptable thing for people to do on planes. Something in the overhead. 
Taking up two in the overhead? Nope. It is letting children play in the aisle, which I've never actually seen. Wait, I've totally seen it. I've never, and I feel like I fly. Why is that? I I mean, okay, if it's a long flight, again, the kids got to go be a kid. So just whatever. Yeah, honestly, I don't even have an opinion on it because I've literally never experienced it. But if it's, I agree, if it's a long enough flight, like I don't, like 86. You're going to be a dad one day and your kid's going to be like running up and down the aisle. (laughs) (laughs) And I hope people aren't getting getting mad at that. That's good. That's good. And then this one, I didn't even know this was thing. So on the reverse side, the the most acceptable thing to do is use a laptop on the tray table. I was like, how, why would that not yeah, be not yeah. be allowed? But okay, you mentioned reclining of the seats. Do people think that's rude? What would I want to get your thoughts on that before I see what the what the people say? So I don't ask because you know what? The chair has the function, and you know it's not really up to them. Is my thing. I did when I was on a long flight. My mom always tells this story. Well, I guess I was kicking the seat a lot because I was, like, having a tantrum and this British man turns around and goes, stop kicking my seat. (laughs) So there was, like, trauma from that. But that's not reclining. I think you're allowed to recline. I think there's definitely an unspoken negative energy when you do. I've also had the, like, I recline and they try to push it up. That's horrible. (laughs) That's horrible. So I think it's fine, but I obviously don't like when the person in front of me reclines. I am anti-reclining because I don't like the chain of chain reaction that it starts. <laughs> if the person in front of me reclines, I don't need to be this close to my screen or have the seat be that close to me. So then I have to recline. And then all of a sudden, it's just this whole chain reaction. But if recline. everybody does, then it's fine. But the problem is not everybody does. Not everybody does. Like, what and, if they were just like, and now the row reclines and everyone in A was like, If it was a uniform thing, fine. I think (laughs) even if it's a long, I think you will be okay if you don't recline. If you need to recline, go by first class and get the whole. That's probably my hot take. I don't think, I hate that the seats recline. I don't don't think, I don't think that. I, 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 mean, I don't look, think that they the should. The current system does not work. Yeah. Like I'll tell, I'll agree with you there and tell you that. But I think to say you can never recline is. It just is what I just, it's so inconvenient. It's it's one of those things that, like, you get all the benefit. You are so much more comfortable, but then the person behind you just is so screwed over from it. So you're just a good person and I'm not. I, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. Okay. Yeah, no, I just thought that, honestly, fine. that is probably my hottest take about airplanes is, oh, that, and then this is also on here. If you're going to get some food... To bring on the plane. Oh, you I'm can't have a hot it, take on this You plane. can't have it be something that we're going to smell 15 rows back. I just don't, like, have it be something that, you know, you could enjoy by yourself. But, like, I don't need the aroma of whatever you're eating to Horrible. Be, to it be needs to be, like, a simple sandwich or simple. salad. Simple. Agreed. Simple. That's not to say that I haven't brought salmon or poke or scary things on That's, planes because that, I have. People have definitely looked at you funny. And I was hungry. Oh, they've looked at me in <laughs> horrible ways. But I'm just like, it's just, you know, like it's like I'm doing it and there's no going back. But I, I try not to do it because okay. I think it's really rude. Okay, two more arm rescues. This is one that I'm very, very passionate about. You need to be mindful of the fact, especially if you're in the middle. If you're in the middle, you can't, you don't, you can't get both. I like to, here's my thing, because again, I like to be mindful of other people. When there is the, if I'm in the seats, I don't even like cross over. I'm like, this is my box. I think everyone should stay in their box. Another hot take, the armrest, nobody should use them. That should be your boundary for what you're able to do. Don't go over, don't. So you're telling me that I'm supposed to sit like this. That's how, that's how I do it. <laughs> That's how I do it. I know that's a hot take. That is another hot take of mine. Oh, I literally Keep... fight for the armrest the whole flight. Like literally, I, it's like I my elbow. I'm just such I a need it. I'm a like, personal space person. Like I don't need. I am not you. <laughs> <laughs> I like I am not. I, okay, that's hilarious. Though. And so this one, it's um for it says use both armrests when there's someone sitting next to them. Seventy four percent of people find that to be unacceptable. Which honestly, I disagree with. There should be some sort of some sort of balance. Okay, now another hot take that I don't even know. I don't know if people do this, and I've never put my phone on airplane mode. Does that make me a bad person? Um, yeah. Why does that exist? What does that because do? Because in my head, that means that the telecommunications of the plane are gonna erupt. Really? Is that why it exists? It's that's definitely not true. But I know there's something that, like, can interfere with the software of okay. the cockpit. I'm okay. pretty sure. Look, Honestly, I let me obviously it. turn my airplane mode off, like, as we're landing to see if I can get a bar or two 
you know, five minutes before. But you were, right. you were you were spot on. Why are airplane passengers asked to put their phones in airplane mode per the FAA website safety information po- page? The FCC and FAA ban cell phones for airborne use because its signals could interfere with critical aircraft instruments. I'm a genius. I told you. That's scary and you have to use airplane. So I I just I've been a bad person. But do time. a lot of people not? I I thought everyone does. That's like phone's not going to work anyway. I don't. Well, it's on this. It says sixty four percent of people find it. You're un- telling me you memorize in five bars. <laughs> it's, you know, thirty two thousand feet. Like, and you don't. On. But it, I've just never. I'm one of those why people. Why do I need to do this? I've never googled it. I've never asked. But now that You're I know, a rule follower. I am, I go back and forth of being one or not. But. but I would. I bet if we surveyed people, it would probably be fifty fifty. I bet okay. there's some people who are just like me, and they've been like, I don't really understand what airplane mode is for. Obviously, there's smarter people who have thought about these things, and there's a reason <laughs> that it's in place. But now that I've done that Google search, I will now be a strict follower. It's like investigative journalism. Yeah. Like I will now be a strict follower <laughs> of of airplane mode. I love it. Okay. okay, good. Okay. Well, we figured it out. We figured it out. We've gotten to the bottom of it. Um, that's enough about airplanes. <laughs> now, to you being your current role, ABC, you are essentially a journalist slash reporter. Yeah. Tell the people about the little series that you do. Tell, tell us about it. This just in right here, Flo. You can see it behind me. Breaking news. Uh, well, it now uses airplane mode. It's yeah. none of that. It's none of that voice. Um... I am a social media producer for ABC News Live, which is our show that streams on Hulu, Roku, abcnews.com, wherever you stream. And my job is essentially to repurpose and repackage what we broadcast or stream in addition to producing and doing some original reporting on social media so that when you are on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Threads, Facebook, you will hopefully, for doing our job well, stop scrolling and resonate with our reporting. So you understand the Supreme Court ruling yesterday, or you understand, you know, the latest on the war in Ukraine or whatever it is. Um, and so it gets to be very creative and and I get to flex that that muscle a lot. And it's been like almost two years. So that's that's what it what it is. How did you get get into that? How did you that sounds like that's it's a pretty cool role. Yeah, it, like it's a very is, coveted role. Is. How did you, you, know what? How'd you, how'd you, how'd you get here's into Here's what I'll say too. I have a lot of um, you know, I think certain things that I've wanted or thought I wanted, like are definitely evolving as relates to storytelling and, you know, the industry, but um, what I will say is it, it is a very unique, cool job, and I am really incredibly grateful for it. The way I came about it was I was full force, you know, in broadcast journalist mode um, at USC, and but I, but I also knew that the broadcast style of storytelling doesn't resonate with Gen Z, millennials. And when you say broadcast, you mean like sitting like in front of Like teleprompter. It you know, morning news got show, it, whatever. It, it. It's just, it's not where we're going. Okay. And I think everybody knows that because again, we're all selfish consumers. Everything's at our fingertips. So my point is appointment television um, is not the future. And we know that. Uh, and, and everybody would say that. Um, but people still need to be informed, obviously. Um, and anyway, the way I, got, so I knew that I, I did know that there were, Parts. I like telling a story from start to finish. Always have, always will. The on-camera element, I think, comes naturally to me, and I enjoy it, but I also like producing and doing stuff behind the scenes. Um, but I kind of the options were to go to a local affiliate market, which is used to be like what you had to do when you wanted to be on air. Um, but I wanted to be kind of in a forward-thinking part of the business where there were people that were trying to do things differently and out of the box. So I got this fellowship. Um at ABC as like a digital fellow, basically, um, in July 2022. And I got this, I pitched them. I basically said, you know, I have all these ideas for how you guys can be doing a better job of disseminating information and telling stories on social media and reaching, you know, new going into new audiences, dipping your toes into new pools that's not english but you know what i mean <laughs> we get it, and yep. they said okay and so i gave them this idea called let's get into it where i would get into any news story under the sun hard news soft news lifestyle 
uh, breaking news. And they went with it. And so I was able to start the network's first ever social media reporting franchise. And we've really grown from there. I now produce this series called Right Here, Right Now, where any correspondent we have on any story anywhere starts by saying, right here, right now. And they just explain what's happening. It's to the point. It's quick. It's 60 seconds, sometimes shorter. So it's really evolved a lot. And I've definitely taken on more of a producer role at ABC because I'm also wanting to learn about longer form producing and documentary style storytelling, news adjacent storytelling. Um, and so I actually have a, a, a half hour special that just came out on Hulu. Oh, that wow. I produced, Congratulations. Which Amazing. was, which was huge. It. Can we clap? Um, wow. No, thank you. So that was huge. And so I'm just trying to like flex different muscles, learn different things. Um, but, but social media as relates to news, um, and getting the news out is a is a beast, and it's a lot harder than it sounds. Yeah, that's well, that's really impressive, and thank you're you. just a little innovator over here doing it. That's pretty. That's pretty. You. That's pretty cool that you were able you pitched the idea and they believed it, it believed was. in it enough to actually. And I will say too, that. for all the taller toddlers listening, and all the everyone's listening, um, I was originally pitched this idea to another company, a big media news company in New York, and they basically said, we really like it, but you need five years of experience and, you know, we just, we just can't do it. Um, and then got an intro to ABC again. It was a fellowship, the pay, you know, it was like an internship out of school. I was like, I don't want an internship. I want a full-time job. And it just, the stars aligned. And I basically gave them an iteration of the idea. And, you know, the past two years have been nothing short of amazing. So do not take the no you get as a no it's just it's going to be a yes somewhere else or Agre someone else and that's that is i love that message especially because i mean we're two years out of college there are so many people i think it's such a critical time where people either realize that they want to keep doing what they're doing yeah. job wise or they want to pivot and do something else and i'll honestly venture to say that more people than not are trying to do something else and i've just from speaking to people it is you get a lot of no's and you get a lot more no's and you get yeses, but all you need is the one yes. And you can have, all it takes is one person to believe in you and believe in your vision. And I don't think a not a, enough companies or senior people do a good enough job of kind mm -hmm. of just taking that bet, taking a chance. Totally. The one company that you, that turned you down, they weren't willing to make that risk. There's all this, you need this level of experience. You need this, you need that, the and, and you need this, that, and the other. How about you just see what I'm pitching to you, you believe in me, and you give me a chance to do that. So it's cool that ABC was able to It was amazing. And especially for such a legacy brand to, like, take a chance on me and the idea. And um, I just have so much respect for them for doing that because that's not easy when yeah. they've always done something a certain way. Um, so I was very just in inspired that they did that and let me do it. Yeah. yeah, dumb question. What's the difference between hard news and soft news? Never a dumb question. Hard news is... Uh, you know, breaking news, politics, uh, you know, international, like kind of the harder, more serious stories about the economy, the world, war, politics, and soft news will be, I don't want to say low hanging fruit, but just something more fun, lighthearted, grabby, right. maybe entertainment is, um, but there can be entertainment news that's hard news. So yeah. it, it, it intersects, but generally. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Have you preferred being behind the camera as a producer or in front of the camera as a host? So in the dream world, I'm doing both. I am never someone that just wants to read a teleprompter. Like, I want to write it. I want to produce it. I want to think about it. I want to be in the field. I want to do the reporting. Um, but I also like coordinating and making – I'm a make-it-happener. So, like, I'm good with people. I like talking to people, making ideas happen, executing. Um, but I've always liked being on camera. But But not in a – you know, newsy news way. Yeah. In in a, in a this way. Yeah, which honestly, you and you touched on this a little bit earlier. I do think our generation has a very different relationship with with news and with They're traditional and traditional media. I think a lot of trust has been eroded. I feel like a lot of Completely. people don't really know where to turn to get their news, and that's why most people now do turn to social media. I saw this one article where. It says that, where is my, the website, 
63%, roughly three in five, 63% of Gen Z say they turn to social media at least once a week for news, a much higher share than the traditional distribution methods like broadcast news at 27% or cable news at 30%. And so we're at this point where when you want to know what's going on, where's the first place you're going, it is going to be Twitter or Instagram or TikTok. And totally. that has its pros and its cons, but because that's the direction of travel, we need things like what you're doing to make mm -hmm. sure that it's as accurate, as vetted as possible. Totally. So we're not getting the wrong information put out there because there is the danger of, I mean, we've all seen fake news headlines all over the internet that'll go viral and get millions Airbag. and millions of views before, honestly, some people never even go and correct it and they just kind of run with that. That is such a dangerous thing and misinformation is so dangerous. And so that oh. balance of, Okay, people are gonna go to TikTok to get their news. How do we ensure that the news that they're getting is stuff like what Elle's producing that's actually verified and accurate? How do we well, how do we strike that balance? I think what people, <laughs> what's so hard for the traditional model right now is like we used to be the only players in the game that could break news, you know, TV and print journalism. Now we're seeing this like reverse osmosis, if you will, where a viral video of some superheated conflict that everybody's talking about. Like, we then have to get the rights to get that video. We got to check who filmed the video. Is it fake? Is it AI? We have misinformation teams embedded into our organization to, like, fact check and figure it out. But by the, sometimes by the time we get the video out, it's three days later and nobody's even talking about it anymore. So it's, like, a scary, weird – and I always use the example of the submersible. When the submersible went missing and or imploded underwater, which was such a crazy story, there were, you know – 16 year olds in the in their sweatshirt in probably the middle of Kansas explaining in such detail what happened um we then had to make ourselves like like the people that I was helping produce oh explain this I was like take the jacket off tell it to people how it is I'll you know push in and out of your face a lot to make it engaging and like we just got to meet people where they are yeah agreed and that is that is such a simple one where again this goes back to traditional broadcast right. media versus Instagram, Twitter, whatever other way you're doing it on social media, there's this like regimented way when it comes to like the broadcast media where it's like people are wearing their suits and ties and there are the women who are in pantsuits and they're speaking in this that. very robotic way. Nobody wants that. And the best example that I always bring up is, and a lot of people feel different ways about this company, but that's not really the point. So ESPN and mm. Sports Center versus a bar stool. Mm. I think a lot of people in our generation have gravitated towards Barstool because they're talking about sports. They're cursing the same way we curse. They are dressed in their hoodies and wearing whatever type of clothing. We don't want to see the robotic anchors on SportsCenter who, to this, for whatever, I'm so anti-Tie now. I watch SportsCenter every morning before I leave for work. That's my go-to. I watch wow. sports top 10, and then that's the last thing I do before I, I leave. I barely know the difference between basketball and baseball, but I love that. I, I love it. Yeah. But every day I open it, and I see that they're still wearing suits and ties when they're brought, talking about sports at like 6 a.m. in the morning. I'm like... For what reason? Let them be comfortable. Let them be a little more loose in the way that they're talking about sports. Let them be a person. Let them be a person. And that is why... You're bar speaking my language. I, I think Speak that's why water. Barstool is Barstool. I think people have whatever opinions about it. Fine. That's not what we're talking about. But I think at a very simple level, the right. freedom at which they express themselves and talk about sports... I will go nine times out of ten to go get sports Absolutely. information from Barstool Absolutely. before I go to ESPN and Sports Center, and I think the exact same is the same. Exactly. Like I'm not watching CNN, I'm not watching Fox, whatever me traditional news outlet you watch. As someone my age, I'm not doing that. I find them boring. I find them very robotic. There, a lot of them are old. Sorry. Like, that just is what it is. So I will go to something like what you do versus going Thank to you. that scene because, again, you are – because you're 23 years old, you know what people your generation want, and so you're producing content like that. And look, good journalism is always going to matter. So we also work with a lot of our talent to, like, socialize their reporting, and that's great. And so many of them are so good at it. And I actually, I'm the rare. If I, Especially if I didn't work in TV news, I would actually watch it just because the style actually parts of it resonate with me, despite what we were just talking about. But But, like, umbrella blanket. It's not. It's just not the way. Yeah, it's not the way. And so how do you, in this new <clears throat> form of media, and how do other journalists, how do you make sure that that kind of journalistic integrity is there, and how do you make sure you keep the trust of even our generation? Mm. Well, and one thing I've kind of dabbled into, I cannot obviously speak for all journalists. I can speak for myself. But I think viewer trust, you said it's been in, it, entirely, if not you know, almost entirely eroded, and it has. 
Um, I think, and and the journalists that I look up to at ABC, at other places, when I can see them as a person, <clears throat> again, on their Instagram, but just just in their their vibe, their MO, like I trust them because I'm like, you're not just ABC News Ella or whatever. You're a person. You yeah. get coffee, you're in a relationship, you go on vacation. And that helps me trust the incredible reporting that they're doing. Um, I also think any type of uh, delivery that's like I love when it's, you know, the camera in the back of the car and it's like, hey, guys, we're going here. This is what's happening. We're chasing down this person. We don't know if they're going to talk to us. I love that because it, it, it's no – people don't want – I am the reporter. I am the anchor. Even outside of news, I am the, you know, I am higher than you and you're the viewer. They want it to be. It's what you were just same saying level. about bars. Yeah. We're the same. We're just going to talk about sports, which we all care about. Maybe I'm the host. Maybe I, I've done a little more homework than you have, but we're all just having a conversation about it. Yeah. And I that's what I like. And that really even goes back to what we're talking about at the start. And when, when you're talking about the idea behind the show and why you do it is because kind of what we were both saying there, when you're able to see someone for who they are and not hold them up to this pedestal, that's when we don't do that enough. Essentially. That's that, when magic happens. Exactly. That really, totally. that relatability, whoever your favorites, I think some people's favorite celebrities are the ones that let them behind the curtain and they're a little more, they're more personal. They're not 100%. trying to put up this one image. They are no trying to, the front. Yeah, we're sick of the fronts. We think that everything is filtered and faced and imperfect and scheduled. Like we just want the people. Exactly. Be authentic, be original. And that is what people will gravitate towards. I don't know why that's so hard for some people to understand for some, because they, you know, why it's so hard. Why? It's so hard because they see everybody else. And so they think that mimicking others, people, authenticity, the author, they people think that mimicking the authenticity of others will make them authentic, but that's the farthest thing from the truth. Yeah, you have to do the work to figure out at your core what really lights you up, who you really are, and then when you align with that, like everything else just works itself out. Yeah. So where do you get your news from, ABC? Mm. <laughs> well, of course. Um, but I, I mean, I actually like to read a lot. There's a lot of great. Uh, Subset. I love podcasts too. Like our our podcast have to plug start here, um, but you know, I mean NPR up first. Like there's so many great quick morning podcasts. Substack letters. I used to work for Jessica Yellen, who is a brilliant, fantastic journalist. Like one of her kind. Used to work at CNN. Left to start this Instagram news network called News Not Noise. Brilliant and breaks everything down in such a relatable way. Um, so I keep up with her and. Um, but I would I would watch probably sometimes if I didn't work in it. But I I don't I read and I'm I'm ch you know checking other outlets of course. But I'm I'm listening to the news all day. So you know it's yeah, my life. Yeah, and I honestly I didn't realize how much of my news I get from social media. Crazy. But I real I'm honestly in that percentage of people who I'm probably getting. Do you have like a daily news routine? Yeah. So or you passive consumer. Or um, no, pretty active. Honestly, even just. Due to the nature of my job, I feel like I need you to be pretty to. plugged in. Yeah. But Morning Brew is one of my favorite. The best. The best newsletter. I've it's been great. reading it every day for three years. I think it's amazing. It's to the point. It's punchy. Gives you the headlines. You do that. There is a C is it C no uh, CNBC. They have a five things you should know yep. before the market before the market opens. Read that every morning. So those are my main two sources, but also just at work MSNBC or CNBC is on all day. You know, so another just... one I have to flag that I just love so much is Axios. Okay. You know them. I know. Isn't that, it's just a website, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, but they have like a newsletter. And they oh, have I didn't know they had a newsletter. Outlets. Okay. The way, I mean, they have lines in bold that are like, why you should care, why this matters, how this relates to you. And it's just about these, you know, big stories that you're maybe not so right in on. And it, yeah. just, it just sums it down and breaks down in such a digestible way. Awesome. Which I love. Axios did. Amazing. Yeah. Done. Noted. I'll add that to the list. But yeah, no, definitely consume media. And I think the biggest thing is from social media is just doing the work to make sure that what you're seeing is accurate. 100%. I think I do a pretty good job of that. If I see something on Twitter, I'm like, okay, let me now go try to fact check it using all these other sources. Totally. So in that sense, you do have to put it on yourself to do a little bit more work. But again, like you can't be lazy if you but want. It's worth it. Yeah, it's, it's worth like it. If you want good. Gym, it's like yeah. you feel good. Yeah. If, I got to go to Soul Cycle to get my happy juice. You yeah. know what I mean? It's exactly. Like, it takes discipline. You're tired, but whatever. Like, yeah. 
Um, okay, and so before, look at that, we're coming up on an hour, because time, because time flies, I time flies. When you're having fun. When you're having a great time, before we get to our two set, honestly, I, no, the tall toddler question, I'll actually, we'll end the show with great. that. So, sec, or one of the two segments that I do on every episode, I ask my guests to come with five songs that, de that describe who they are as a person. I'm an asshole, so I give Ella three hours notice. I literally, okay, I got back, music. I got back home really late last night, and I was like, wait a second, I have not you? told her to prep for the one segment that- You texted <laughs> me at like 1 a.m. Yeah. Like, excuse me. I was, I was surprised that I was like there enough to text, but texted you, gave you a little notice, but please. So five songs to describe who you are as a person, open to interpretation, give us the song and give us the reason. Oh, I have to give the reason. Yes, okay. Yes, yes, yes. I hate you. Um, <laughs> okay, we're going to start. So I did make a playlist and it's really hard for me to narrow it down, but I'm just going to do the ones that are speaking to me right now. Um, Brown Eyed Girl by Van Morrison. Love because it. Because I'm a brown eyed brown girl, girl. Yeah. and it just, <laughs> I have so many nostalgic memories of this song with my dad and like being at the beach and like he would tell me I'm a brown eyed girl and he would tell me I'm his brown eyed girl and it just makes me feel like grounded and free and like lighthearted and just happy. So we'll start with that. Um, we're going to do number two, which is Hotel California by the Eagles. Great song. I do believe that I was in a 70s rock band in the past <laughs> lifetime. Um, I don't sing and I don't play an instrument. Um, I do use my hands to talk, which is like an instrument in and of itself. I do dance, but um, I just, that beat, it makes me feel like this like really powerful nostalgia. And I'm just like, it's good. I just need like Hotel California. <laughs> um, soundtrack to My Life by Kid Cudi. Love because it. Because I love Cudi. And I'm just like, I've got some issues that nobody can see. And that's okay. <laughs> like, it just, it, it, that's just something when I'm like walking into, I don't know, a meeting or a, I, I don't know. That song also, I think, grounds me. Um, oh my God, this is so hard. I <laughs> Number so four. Many Number four. Good ones. You only, you only got five. Okay, we'll do Heat Waves by Glass Animals. Do I know that song? I do know that song. Sometimes all I think of that is you. Yes, 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 of it's course. Just, oh, my God, was, what year was that all over the radio? Yeah, it was such a song. formative, yes. like, song for me, and I love Glass Animals, and it just reminds me of, like, a happy, but also a happy time in my life, but also a time when I was, like, going through stuff. Um, And so to be on the other side of it, it now, I think listening to it's really powerful. And number five. That's really hard, but it... it I mean, like, to do Fleetwood Mac or Florence and the Machine, like, I don't know. But I'm just going to go with, I'm going to go with uh, Heart Lines by Florence and the Machine. Well, I don't think because I know Because I just adore her. She is so authentic. And I just, like, that song is, like, from this powerful scene in, like, a TV show that I love. Gossip Girl, we're not going to, like, make it sound like a cinematic <laughs> TV Yeah, I was like, show. wait, which one? <laughs> uh, it's, like, the chase, the date, the car, whatever. I just love that song. It just, like, makes me feel, like, really empowered to, like, keep moving forward. I also have to throw in Heaven is a Place on Earth, Earth by Belinda Carlisle. We're, we're, we're going to redact that. Okay, yeah, yeah, sorry. No, <laughs> bye. Back, bye. No, I'm kidding. Fine. You gave, you gave us a bonus. Night. You gave us a bonus. I love, okay. I love it. I love it. Okay, and then second to last thing, um, uh, I asked each of my guests, based on this one article that I read that I love so much that had people in their early 20s manifest their life 10 years in the future mm -hmm. and, like, to the most specific detail possible. Send it to me? I will send it okay. to you. And the second part, it was, like, it calculated how much they'll need to be making to live that life. Just a great article. Loved okay. it. Great. I'll, I will send it to you. Can't wait. So, Ella, 10 years in the future, manifest where you want to be to the most specific detail possible. Because I love manifestation. When you said that earlier, I was like, this is all I do on the show. I manifest big things for myself and my guests. So put everything out there that you want 10 years from now to the most specific detail possible. Okay, this is scary. Um, but... I'm going to I'm going to have you do like the automated email where you send this to me in 10 years. Okay. <laughs> Ooh, I should do. It, you I should like do that. that. That's I like actually that. Actually like amazing. Okay, in 10 years, I'm 33, which means that the mismarketed decade of my 20s is behind me, so I'm <laughs> starting to really feel aligned in myself, like even more than I could even imagine, and I'm 33. Um to be married or not to be married, question mark. I really can't see myself married before 30. Okay. Which is like kind of, I think, crazy for a lot of women. But 33, I, don't I think. I think that's that I think We don't have time to get into that conversation. Yeah. I don't think that's that crazy. Okay. I think 33 will be 
I'll be in a really good spot. I think I will have lived in London and New York and California. I'm going to have lived in California, so I don't know where I'll be, but I feel like it would be one of those. Or it could be Austin, Texas. Like, who knows? Um, Career-wise, I feel like I'll be buzzing. Taller toddlers will be even more than I could even imagine. I could see it going in so many different directions. I mean, being on – I mean, I actually don't like working red carpets, but, like – it could be a production company. It could be asking people. On, you know, like I will have had some really fascinating taller toddler conversations and done some really out of my mind collaborations with people. Um, I'll also be acting. Mm. Oh, okay. We didn't even get into that. We didn't get into uh, that. Part I, two. You'll be back yeah, on. This I is too fun I, it's not too to have fun. you back it's, on. Thank yeah. you. I'm having the best. <laughs> um, I'll be acting, and I'll also be my screenplay that I'm writing will also be greenlit in production or maybe even already made um taller toddlers will be like a full video podcast um i don't want to get too like political abc but like it could be in the picture maybe not i'm not sure um but basically my life i will be a full-time 24 7 creative and i will continue to nurture the incredible friends i have in my life um and hopefully i'll have continue to have really deep relationships and my family will be like healthy and happy my sister will be on Broadway by then. Got to throw that in there. My younger sister will have gone to college and will probably live God knows where, maybe in New York doing some like, she's probably going to be in the CIA, Julia. <laughs> the little one. Um, so life will just feel really full. And I feel like we will have transitioned as a society even more like l- to, to using social media even less. And the people that don't sh- tell everything all the time will be like more valued and cooler. Um, so yeah, and yeah, I love every part of that. And I will also know, I think you're the first person to include dreams for other people in your answer, which is very special and just shows how much you care. And when you said, I was like, wait a minute, no one's ever been like, oh, my sibling will be doing this. I'm just my, like, I can't I, rise without them. This is true. I, I need, I need my peeps to come on up with me. Like it's lonely. It's the top. It's lonely at the top. Lonely like, at the top. Great song. Yeah. No, it's lonely. Like I don't want to be up there without the people I love. I yeah. don't want to be. I'm not happy if they're not happy too. Yeah. I love every single part of that. I am manifesting all that for you. Thank Can't you. wait to see tall toddlers grow. And ah! I will come on anytime you want. You're coming, we're having another Go with the flow and tall toddler. We're gonna just, we're gonna rise. And when we when we're both national brands in ha- ten wait. years, Literally we'll play this episode back and we'll remember this moment. I can't this wait. this is amazing. And then the last question that I'll ask you is one that you ask all your guests and you ask me also. What would you tell your taller toddler? Or is it what your tall it toddler could be self either. would tell? Okay. I could do both. I mean it's Okay, it's, okay, let's do let's do it's like what either it's what would I tell my younger self or okay. what would my younger younger self tell my older self if she could see me now let's do that one the what was your one. yes what would your younger self tell the tell the current you if she could see you now if smaller toddler ella could see taller taller okay we're starting that over <laughs> cut <laughs> it's a tongue i twister. can't do my own question <laughs> if smaller toddler ella could see taller toddler ella now oh my god it's gonna make me cry i think she would she would have a big bow like right clipped like right here and she would just look up at her at me with these like big brown eyes and just be like wow I mean I'm like gonna cry oh my god some of the things that just felt like the biggest personal mountains to climb and external um things that just felt in the way or felt like I couldn't overcome which were mainly just stories I told myself about myself and about my abilities and the fact that I overcame them to like come into this awesome version of myself, she would just be like, wow, keep going, keep going. I don't even have anything else to add. That was that was beautiful. That was beautiful. Thank you for being so honest. Thank you for being so authentic. Thank you. Thank you for just being awesome. Thank you for taller toddlers. This is this is amazing. Great episode. This is why I do this. I know. This is literally our second time meeting ever. It's amazing. Both times have been so amazing. And yeah, this this is exactly why I do go with the flow. And this, for these interactions to learn from people, for other people to learn from you. See and two I can't people wait just connect. for people to listen and learn and hopefully just feel like seen and heard. Yeah. Because that's what you're trying to do. That's what I'm trying to do in our unique ways. And like, 
thank you, Julia. Like, thank you. Yeah, shout so out to Julia. Grateful. Yeah, you're, <laughs> she made you're it. Amazing. She made this happen. Amazing. This, yeah, amazing, phenomenal episode. Um, yeah, I got. I think that was a beautiful way to leave things. Um, everyone, ask that question to yourself. Mm-hmm. If your younger self could ask, say, kind of say something to you where you are right now, what would that be? That would be. That's my last thing that I'll, that I'll leave everyone with. Wow. Ella, thank you for coming thank on the show. You. This was like the most fun play date ever. This so. was uh, next time I'll bring the sippy cups. Cannot more, more, wait. More, more, I should have brought crossover. them. Cannot wait. This has been another episode of Go with the Flow. Thank you for listening.